What is up, everyone, and welcome back to ANR Gaming. This time, we're going to be talking about Lord of Heroes, which is a new global launch game. And uh, we're going to be talking more specifically about 10 pro tips to help you guys progress quick. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, but let's go ahead and jump right into the first tip. And that's going to be pay attention to your chapter milestone rewards. Now, that is located down here at the bottom left of the screen, as you can see. You click that, it'll kind of show you, you can see in the background, it's kind of uh, dictating what chapter you should be on for this particular section. Um, so this does kind of go along with your natural campaign progress. You just want to make sure that you're actually keeping up with this because as you can see, there's a lot of times whenever it asks you to complete a particular um, mission or uh, complete several missions in a particular region. And if you're not keeping up with it, that means that you're going to have to do it again later on, which is a waste of stamina, which will, trust me, it doesn't, it, you have a lot of it right now, but later on it will run out. So make sure that you just stay on top of it in order to optimize everything that you're doing. Not to mention, um, there it gives out great, great rewards that you're not going to be able to even farm until much later in the game. So uh, that's another reason to basically complete these as quickly as possible with the campaign. All right, tip number two is going to be uh, check back at the Mystic Shop as often as you can. So the Mystic Shop every hour refreshes and it gives you always these two options here um, for a free gift if you watch an ad. It's usually a 15, 30 second ad and uh, it gives you these two gifts. Usually the gifts are pretty good, like stamina pots as you can see. Um, those will end up being a little more scarce later on in the game. So you definitely want to make sure that you're collecting those as fast as you can, as often as you can. And uh, it'll even see it coincide quite often with these um, chapter rewards where it tells you to go to the Mystic Shop. Basically at least once a region it tells you to do that and buy something and you can basically couple that up with one of your hourly refreshes here. So yeah, just make sure that you're paying attention to those. All right, the next tip is going to be upgrade your gear. Now, as you progress through the campaign, you're gonna realize very quickly that for some reason these enemies are stronger than you. And that is because even though you're keeping up level wise, you're gonna realize that this game is very gear dependent. Characters need good equipment in order to actually do well in the game. Um, even though you're matching someone in level, that doesn't mean that you're gonna do well against them unless you actually have good gear. So, um, as you can see right here, uh, I have a character with even a few basic items on her that I have upgraded to plus six. Upgrading gear in this game gives you a huge amount of a stat bonus to that particular item. Um, so even just like a plus three, or if you really want to do plus six, you know, anything higher than plus six, you start spending a lot of money and it has a fairly high um, fail rate the higher you go up. So you do want to get a little careful, careful and balance your money out a bit. You only want to upgrade gear that uh, you really know is going to be sticking around for a long time to the higher levels like plus six uh, and 12, like between there. But for basic stuff, upgrade it plus three. And uh, the more like basic an item is, the less it's going to cost for each upgrade. So um, upgrading to like plus three on, on you know basic items with low rarity is not going to be that much money and it's going to be so worth it stat wise. So uh, definitely make sure that you are doing that. All right, next tip is going to be uh, set bonuses. So set bonuses are super important um, for stat optimization. So basically every uh, piece of gear in this game essentially has particular uh, bonuses, as you can see at the bottom here of each item, I do a two set, some of them are higher, like four set. And uh, if, as long as you complete all of those, you have you know four pieces of gear, two people, two pieces of gear that match that same set bonus, you'll be able to unlock that for the character. And that makes the character's stats far more efficient. So try to get as many of those in as you possibly can. All right, the next tip is going to be speed is super important. So basically um, for the Colosseum especially, you're gonna find out that speed is uh, essential in order to start beating people in the Colosseum because the game will be dictated within the first three, four turns maybe 
Um, and if they aren't, if you're not going first, you're going to lose very quickly because most people just have AOE characters and they destroy your characters quickly and there's nothing you can do about it. So if you have a team where basically two people go before you can go once, you're already kind of screwed. <laughs> so you really want to pay attention to your speed stat. Uh, that's going to dictate if you're going to win or lose in these games. So um, definitely try to uh, equip gear that have a speed stat on it um, to help out those characters, at least for the Colosseum. You might end up having raid gear versus Colosseum gear, but either way, you want to pay attention to that. Or, or pay attention, use characters that have naturally high speed and also have like AoE or something like that. But just make sure that you're paying attention to that speed stat and when you need it. All right, so the next tip is going to be gear everyone. So in this game, um, you know, you do have your main five characters that you're going to be using throughout the campaign. You definitely want to always have them geared up, but there are a couple of different modes where having more than those five characters are going to be important. One of which is very important. Now, um, so the first one is going to be Colosseum because you can't have characters attack and defend at the same time. Obviously, you're going to want to, before you even have 10 characters, which will take a little bit to get a full set of 10, you want to go ahead and just take out the characters that you have on defense and then put them on attack and then you want to put them back on defense so it'll only be a small window of time that you'll be vulnerable with only like one character in there um but basically once you have enough characters it's a good idea to make sure that window is at least guarded a little bit with your you know second tier characters that you're going to have so you want to have them geared up a little bit and ready to go but the most important part right here is for raids. So whenever you get involved in a raid, you're going to have the ability to have in up to 10 characters. And that is where you're going to want those other characters geared up and ready to go because raids are difficult, especially at the beginning, whenever you're trying to help out your alliance. So you definitely want to gear all of your characters. Um, it matters. Even if you do just put on, as you can see here with my characters, you know, um, so Schneider isn't part of my main anymore. Uh, I have him geared up with some basic stuff and uh, I am going to be upgrading <laughs> them a little bit, um, but you know, just to like plus three or so, but that helps out a huge amount if you do that because a non-stat or a non-geared character, as I said, gear is incredibly important, is not going to do nearly as much as a even basic geared character. So definitely keep that in mind. All right, the next is going to be join alliances. So I already uh, I collected my alliance rewards from earlier, but basically you want to get into an alliance as quick as possible because not only can you uh, collect these rewards every day, now this seems like a very small amount of rewards, uh, but usually the screen is filled with all the stuff that you're going to be getting. Once you get into the like higher, like, you know, 80 out of 100 or whatever, um, you're going to be getting a whole bunch of stuff that's going to really, really help you out. So you definitely want to join Alliance as quick as possible. That also allows you to get into raids and you get a raid currency basically that you can use to unlock special things here in the Alliance shop, as you can see. So you want to be paying attention to that and you want to get involved with the raid as quick as possible. Plus, it's just fun to have that social aspect. So definitely pay attention to that. All right, next tip is going to be upgrade Helga and Charlotte. So if you look here in the character screen, um, you see that I have this character Helga. You unlock her naturally as the campaign progresses. Um, I would say it's about halfway-ish through the uh, normal campaign. And so, you know, that's before you go through hard and extreme. Um, but she is a monster of a character. Incredibly good damage builder. I'm sorry, damage dealer. Um, you're going to be keeping her pretty much forever unless you end up spending a lot of money on this game to unlock a few characters that are actually better than her so along with her um, in that position there's also charlotte here which is the best healer pretty much in the game i think there's maybe one or two that's better but they are uh, not for free to play uh people that is for sure um, you're going to be spending a lot of money to get them so definitely keep that in mind you want to gear out these characters since they're going to be your constant charlotte is also you get her at the very start of the game so She's an incredibly good character to keep in. Those two, you know you're always safe to promote, level up, and gear up because you know they're going to characters that are going to be with you until the very end. So don't be shy using your resources on them. All right, uh, next one is going to be strategically promote. 
So this one, um, resources for promotion, they don't come around super often and there's not a good way to farm them early game. So you definitely wanna watch what you're upgrading and promoting here. Um, so basically as you progress, I mean, as you start out, you're gonna have lots of three star characters. Now promotions, like their star rating does matter stat wise. So, and it makes a, a decent um, difference. It's not like gear level difference, but it's a fairly large um, boost. So if you have a three star character and then you naturally like, like Fram for instance here, she starts off with you three, she's three star. She's definitely good. Her kit is even better than this character that you get uh, naturally through the campaign later on, but they're both guardians. And this one is four stars naturally, as opposed to the three stars over here. Now, this is where I think that you should just go ahead and uh, kick over that gear to um, her and then use her at her natural four star state instead of using that equipment, I'm sorry, that those materials to promote someone up to four stars. Because honestly, um, at least for now, the difference between the characters, even though the kit is better from one than the other, the difference between the characters aren't gonna make as much of a difference as hoarding, needing to hoard those materials at the beginning of the game, because like I said, they're precious. And you wanna make sure that you're upgrading the right characters and they're just scarce. So um, definitely you'll find that with, um, you know, Mikael and uh, I forgot her name, Mei Ling uh, later on, like it's the same situation, three star versus a natural four star. Um, and then you even get Astrid later on, who's also a sniper, you could take that place as well. So yeah, lots of things there, just pay attention to the star rating and when you should go ahead and basically move everything over. All right, so the next tip is going to be use expeditions. So expeditions are really important in this game. Um, currently I have them out on the timer here for the expeditions, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that little timer where it says X amount of time left. Um, basically you have the option to send out a certain amount of people onto expeditions and uh, it, that depends on how many regions you, you've unlocked and how many characters you have. But that gives you a lot of uh, materials and gear whenever they finish up. Um, it'll give you like a little prompt of choosing an option between, you know, two pieces of, or you know, two options of rewards per couple that you're sending out. So you end up getting a lot of gear back. So it does cost energy to send them out, but it is, it is worth it in the long run gear wise and material wise. So if you have the energy to spend, definitely do those if you can. All right, and that pretty much sums up the 10 pro tips to help you guys progress quick at the beginning of the game. Um, so another little bonus one, I always like to give a bonus one for those of you that stick around to the end. So that one's gonna be actually dealing more with the shop. So the shop here, um, it, it has good deals, but there's also some terrible ones as well. So I'm just gonna kind of tell you like a little, little trick here of what you need to, to pay attention to. So as you can see, I've spent about 15-ish dollars in this game, um, and that's pretty much all I plan on spending, um, at least for now. And uh, basically, I just went went down the line here and, and looked at these very cheap priced uh, options, uh, packages that they have, and they're actually very, very cost effective as far as what you get and what their you know apparent set values are. Because if you see here down in the crystal strong box, they value. 250 crystals for five dollars which is absolutely absurd by the way never do that but if you go over here to this two dollars and you get 200 crystals plus 50,000 gold plus all of these materials uh, and, and elixirs on top now you can do these five times a week for two dollars you you these are the things that you need to look at basically don't worry about this crap down here at the bottom because that is crazy look at that a hundred thousand for 250 crystals that's crazy so basically right there you get 50,000 gold with the 200 for two dollars and those other materials and the potions it's just it it doesn't make any sense with the value that they put in I don't know who was making these offers and deals but they didn't calculate the good options for for the crystals or the or the gold so don't even pay attention to those at the bottom um, but that pretty much does it for the packages here. Just pay attention 
to what those small count ones are and then just look through and see if it's worth it based you know on the pricing that they have for everything else so that will wrap it up for this video guys make sure you comment down at the bottom if you guys have any more tips to help out i'm sure everyone would really appreciate it you know also feel free to tell me what you're thinking about the game i'm loving it so far i'm probably going to have another video or two coming out fairly soon here talking about different aspects of it but um yeah so don't forget to like and subscribe thank you all so much for listening to the video and i will catch you next time game on